When I was a kid, my dream was to become a game developer. I used Scratch a lot, and when I saw a YouTube video of someone making a full Mario game, I was mind blown. This person was using Game Maker, so I went ahead and installed it. I had no coding experience at all, and even after following many tutorials, I was left with something pretty disappointing. Now I'm 19 years old, and I'm studying computer science. I still don't have any experience in game development, but at least I have a slight idea on how it works. Some months ago I started to play with Game Maker, but the idea for this video clicked when I saw some posts on some forums that explain how to get your Game Maker games working on the Switch. So I've decided to finally realize my inner child's dream. I opened Game Maker and restarted my first ever project, my own Mario game. The idea for the game is pretty simple. It's going to be a simple 2D Mario game with pixel art graphics like Super Mario Flashback. It's going to have moves from modern Mario games such as the ground pond and the wall jump, and instead of switching between big Mario and small Mario, it's gonna have a more modern approach, which is a health bar, like in 3D Mario games. So let's start my Mario game, Super Mario Bros. 5. The first thing I had to do was to download some sprites, since I'm not an artist. I found these sprites for Mario and converted them into GIFs. I leave download links and credits to the various artists in the description. I then built a basic player object, using some pretty default collision and movements code, but it was pretty stiff. Let's take a moment to study Mario's movement, and why it feels so good. When Mario starts to move, he doesn't immediately reach full speed, but his speed increases gradually. Same thing when he starts to run and when he jumps. He slows down at the top and accelerates towards the bottom. He also doesn't immediately stop, but rather he slows down gradually. The same thing happens when he changes direction. He takes time to stop and then starts running again. We can implement this by making his speed increase until it reaches a certain value, rather than setting it directly. We can see that the movement already looks more natural. We also have to implement his hair movement, where has a little less horizontal speed control. This required a lot of testing, but I eventually got it. Another important thing is that Mario's jump height changes according to how much we press the jump button. This is very important for more advanced levels and can easily be implemented by giving Mario an initial jump strength when pressing the button and increasing it in every frame we keep the button pressed, obviously within a certain limit. Now we have to think about which moves to implement. I've decided to implement the three moves used in the modern 2D games, the ground pound, the wall jump and the triple jump. The triple jump was as easy as implementing a counter for the number of jumps that resets after the third jump or after two seconds that have passed without jumping after touching the ground. The ground pound was also easy, mainly made by countdowns for the various steps. The wall jump was a bit trickier, but eventually got it. It's triggered when Mario touches a wall while in the air and keeps moving towards it. The jump part was a piece of cake. Before implementing enemies and objects, I have to figure out a way to make Mario's collision specific to the part he's touching. What I mean is that he can kill enemies only when he stomps them, while being damaged when getting hit from all other parts, and destroy bricks only when he hits them from below. I don't know if this is the best way, but since my other projects were simple fighting games, I made a hitbox system. There are three hitboxes with specific collisions, the bottom and the top one when jumping, and a special one when doing the ground pound. Now we have to implement the enemies. After tweaking a lot of sprites, so we finally have Goombas, Koopas, Working Bricks and question mark blocks. After adding the enemies, I made an old system with a new eye. I also used particles to make the game look better. The bricks now get actually destroyed and Mario's run and wall slide the leva trees, even though this took a lot more time than what I want to admit. I then added some filters and a parallax background that looks at least fine, and in the coins was also pretty easy, with a counter on top and I made it so that the Koopa shells can be picked up and interact with the rest of the world, such as collecting coins and destroying bricks and other enemies. Now it was time to polish the project. The game kinda works, but everything still looks pretty dead, since there aren't any sound effects. Let's just steal some from other Mario games and... I then made some more adjustments such as a simple title screen, an actual introduction to the level, making the enemies collide with each other and change direction, adding star coins with a specific counter, perfecting the HOD also by adding the score counter, adding a mushroom to heal Mario, making Mario's heart and death animation a bit better, making the game compatible with controllers by using game maker's functions, adding a star to properly end the level, adding a combo system to get 1-ups and more points when killing more enemies with jumps or shell, expanding the level a bit and making it prettier, and a ton of debugging. And after all of this we are left with…
and this is pretty much the core game. The idea could be greatly expanded, maybe by implementing new levels, power-ups, enemies and maybe even Yoshi. Continuing this project may be a cool idea for a future video, let me know in the comments if you'd like it. And now, the part all of you probably clicked this video for, porting the game to the Switch. The original plan was to show the whole process, even though it's nothing crazy, but after investigating for a couple of weeks, I came to the conclusion that I wasn't 100% comfortable in doing that. This is something insanely particular, and I couldn't really figure out if it was okay to show it, legally speaking. Nintendo is very strict with their hardware and software, so I think that this is for the best. But what I can do is explain how it works. Basically, since we got Undertale and Deltarune on the Switch, people have figured out how to replace the executable with their own Game Maker 2 games. There are actually plenty of methods, and for a lot of consoles. I was able to find tools and tutorials also for PS Vita and PS4, although I'm not sure they share the same base idea. All of these methods produce unsigned code, that obviously can't be sold as a real game, but it's a neat thing for DIY projects. Obviously, you need modded consoles or emulators to run these games. I'm pretty sure that some of these tools aren't illegal, since they shouldn't include any stolen code and you have to dump many required files from your console. If you are interested in how this can be done, make your own research, but I chose to not show the process and to not leave any download links, and I kindly ask you to not ask for them. I hope that you understand my decision. And now... Well, it works, but it's very laggy. Probably because I set a resolution that is way too high for the Switch tablet, since by docking it, the game runs perfectly. Also, there seems to be some kind of bug that mixes up particle effects, probably caused by the tool. So let's see what we can do to make the game run better. We can write this code that loads an area just a little bigger than what the camera is seeing, so that we don't have many objects active at once. We can also switch the sprites for the ground to tiles, since they should be lighter. Also, since I don't know how to fix or what even causes the particles bug, I think that it's better to remove them completely. And finally, we can decrease the game's resolution. Now it runs great also in handle mode, even though we are now stuck on a lower resolution also in docked mode. But I got an idea. Nintendo Switch developers probably have access to some functions to check if the Switch is docked or not. We don't have access to that, but what we have is this function that can detect the screen's resolution. We can create a persistent object that checks for the resolution and changes it to whether the detective resolution is higher or equal to the one of the Switch tablet. After trying it in this test project, in which we can see that the resolution change is correctly detected when switching between handled and docked mode, we place the object in our game and we finally have the game up and running, and we can call this project a success. Before I close the video, I want to clarify that everything I've shown today is just for entertainment purposes. I won't leave any download links to the game, tools and guides. If you choose to try this yourself, make sure to check the laws in your country about homebrew and modding. So guys, that was about it for this video. Make sure to leave a like and subscribe, share the video with your friends and maybe leave a comment. I'll see you next time!